Okay, this is Ryan Ham, and I wanted you to see what I thought was interesting. It is an EIG model E16 four-shot pistol. Now, you've probably never heard of it. You might have heard of the Mossberg Brownie, but uh, you can see some of the markings there. Nice big EIG marking there. Kind of adjust my light here a little better. And there you go. Should be able to see that marking pretty good. Again, EIG. Forgot what that stands for. Let's turn it over. And you will see it's got the serial number there. Italy. The EIG logo again. Some Italian proof marks. I'm sure somebody could tell me what the date is based on those. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, let me show you that it is indeed unloaded. You can see, you can almost see through the barrels. And you can certainly see this way that, you know, as well as you... As well as you can, they're rifled barrels. And there's four each. They're kind of laid out in a square pattern there. You can see the firing pin. And you can see it's in the what would be the upper right position right now. And it actually rotates. You can see the indentations from the cases there. Where the cases were set back against the breech face there. Got a little locking latch here operates uh, I'm assuming on a spring pressure a spring down inside the grips there I had the grips off but I didn't take too close of a look at it it's also got this neat little groove here along the top I guess to help in in, in uh, pointing I won't say aiming I'll say pointing there's a nice little front sight there and you can see here an ejector extractor I guess I wouldn't call it an ejector I've shot it and certainly is helpful but I would have rather brought a dowel out to remove the cartridges and you'll see that from the shooting video that I did it's held on with those screws and the bad thing is that you get your thumb stuck in between the screws and the extractor and uh, it can pinch you and, and, and cut you and not exactly a good thing of course you're not going to be doing any speed reloads I do reloads in the video so you can see how fast the reloading is neat hinge down about here very small hinge pin uh, especially if you're going to be shotgunning this like you do a, a, a break action shotgun doubtful it'll be able to survive very many of those and you see up here there's the pivot pin for the for the latch there there's two lugs here where the latch catches and uh, it was kind of loose. I uh, I tightened it up. You can see a little bit of movement there. I, I did tighten it up some. When I had the grips off, I, I, I pinched it judiciously in a vise here. And I was able to uh, reduce the, the real sloppy tolerances on it. If you could see down the sight, it really looks... Eh, it almost looks like it would be a real gun. You see the front sight's all fuzzy, the rear notch is in, in focus, it's kind of the opposite way it, it should be. I doubt the camera will focus the way a human eye should. Okay, well, there it is. To operate it, you uh, there's these little serrations on the side of the latch here. You can see, and it's meant, I guess, to be grasped like this and pulled up. However, I've been kind of doing this and uh, try not to keep it from slamming open because it isn't going to last very much longer if I do that. Um, oddly enough it seems like decent metal. It almost seems like they used stainless steel but looking at the finish especially on the back strap here I'm guessing it's just a chrome plating 
looking how at how it wears there it's wearing like a, a chrome plated gun but that might just be the receiver because the the frame itself or the uh, barrel assembly itself is actually doing pretty good uh, finish wise um, a lot of sharp edges uh, the muzzle almost looks like somebody took a took a bandsaw to it and cut it off and then you know, it didn't really do any deburring debur or dehorning on it eh, kind of cheaply made um, not sure exactly how it was manufactured it was manufactured in the 60s sometime I believe although I'm not entirely sure again if somebody can look up the date the Italian date codes on there you'd, you'd do me a favor I could I'll post it in the um, in the description uh, so there you have it uh, two small grip screws at the bottom um, a little crack there uh, I, I don't think that crack was there I think I made that crack by firing it I didn't shoot it too much so real brittle uh, the grips are a few years old I understand you can get replacement grips for this if you want I don't know why anybody would want to put any money into this gun any more than was already there so I have a box somewhat it's in a pretty shabby shape um, uh, and as you could see somebody put this remark in there that that's an older remark EIG four shot derringer has rotating firing pin and yes it does have a rotating firing pin and I'll demonstrate that in a minute um, so the box is meant to be hinged of course it's torn there uh, you see the markings on the box don't know what that means uh, serial number no the serial number isn't on the back but the serial number is on the front I'm not so worried about people seeing the serial numbers of my guns because I have the serial number on YouTube first so yeah. I'll take my receipt out of there and you can see that uh, uh, yeah Italian I don't know what any of that means there's a certificate uh, of individual chorus whatever I'm not uh, I'm not Italian so I won't pretend to read it and, and make a fool out of myself And somebody else can feel free to read it if they want. And oh, okay, well that's all the um, that's all the boxes. And let's go into a little bit of history on this. So many of you, I'm sure, are familiar. In fact, most of you should be if you're watching a gun video should be familiar with the Mossberg model 500 shotgun and a few of you will know about the Mossberg Brownie I think that was Mossberg's first product and the Brownie was a four shot pistol real similar to this not identical and uh, you, you're gonna know by looking at this that it's obviously a copy um, there have been some better or worse copies out there, but it's just that. It's a copy. Uh, uh, Cobra made a copy uh, somewhat. Uh, it copied the rotating firing pin, um, but on the top of the trigger it had a, um, a lug that engaged in a cam, and it actually it, it was a revolving cylinder. And I think it held three rounds of 380, <laughs> and five rounds of 22 long rifle in interchangeable cylinders and it had two barrels I believe the top barrel was 22 and the bottom barrel was 380 and you could put the cylinder in there and you'd be able to pull the trigger five times if you had a misfire uh, too bad because you'd have to remove the cylinder completely and start over uh, you could search for that gun I think they called it the pocket pal uh, my memory is pretty good on that. I think it was the Pocket Pal. Again, Mossberg uh, Brownie copy in a, in a lot of ways. They added a whole lot of neat features that uh, didn't work too well. Really heavy trigger pull. Um, 
kind of an awkward gun. I'd like to see one one day, but I don't think I'd like to own one. Uh, this pistol, uh, like most European copies, is meant to basically to sell to people who remembered the Mossberg Brownie. And there were a lot of people around that remembered the Mossberg Brownie, but could no longer get a hold of one. And being all nice and shiny and, and new, uh, you would think that, you know, a lot of people would have bought it, believing that, uh, well, this is, you know, like a Mossberg Brownie. When in fact, they, they'd pretty much get a... Uh, it's not quite as poorly made as a lot of the uh, cheap Lorsen type guns, but uh, hey, you get you get what you get. Well, let me let me just demonstrate that. Uh, well, I guess I can't demonstrate that rotating fire firing pin. What I can do is, and I don't mind dry firing it because no big deal. So you see, it's in the upper right. If I pull the trigger, what it does is it withdraws that whole firing pin assembly back here. And rotate it, rotates at the same time, and then it uh, it lets it go. So you'll hear it. There's also a, it's a very long trigger pull. So now I'll open. You can see it's rotated uh, clockwise. Do it one more time. And then for good measure. That seems to work decent. You can see how much of a gap there is around that firing pin. The hole doesn't seem to fit the, the firing pin, the rotating firing pin. Don't know why, that's just why it is. Yeah. Let's go shoot it. And uh, when we get back, I'll have some uh, criticisms uh, and uh, shooting impressions. And then I will wrap this up.
Okay, I shot one box of the Winchester and I cannot force them out, so I'm going to have to take the gun home and use a range rod to get them out, cleaning rod. Uh, Winchesters are a little higher pressure. I waited to shoot those. Um, overall, pretty decent performance for as cheap a gun as it is. It fired about two-thirds of the time, three-quarters of the time. I would never use it as a defensive arm. Just an interesting toy. I think the design could work. Um, the reason it's not working is because it's poorly executed. Uh, and it's been poorly executed before. I think they just need to yeah, kind of abandon the idea and do something that we know works. Enjoy. Okay, we're back. Now, Certainly, that was an interesting shooting session. You'll notice a lot of misfires. Again, I'll, uh, I'll print um, um, down in the description uh, how many misfires, or you can count yourself. Uh, there, there was actually a few rounds fired off camera, and I had uh, one, I called it in a video, uh, or in the video, <laughs> one box, uh, it's actually uh, one uh, quartet of uh, shots, um, one uh, four shot burst, I guess, uh, where it misfired on two cylinders. And that was before I did the, the first video. Uh, and then I had the one off camera that I shot the, the four Winchesters in, uh, those all fired, uh, the, the first pull of the trigger. So not, uh, not always what you get. It doesn't always fire the, the first time you pull the trigger. Uh, so that's one huge criticism in a defensive arm. It, the gun should go off when you pull the trigger. Okay. Uh, some other criticisms I have. It is hideously small. Um, you can put your finger in front of the barrel um, if you're stupid, <laughs> I guess, uh, and fire the gun fairly simply, uh, and, and that could be dangerous. Um, you saw earlier the gun was unloaded. I, this is actually a continuation of the same video. I did the shooting video first, and I'm doing this video uh, later. Um, so uh, that is one criticism. The other is just it can pinch. It can pinch in between here very easily, and I was very careful not to let it. Um, and there's all kinds of little sharp angles and, and areas that'll that'll get you. Uh, it didn't me, and <laughs> I think that was just pure luck. I don't, I don't think there was any skill or any experience involved in that. I think I was just lucky. Uh, the main pinch point I already discussed earlier in the video was right here. Um, huge, huge issue was it not going off when you pulled the trigger. If it doesn't go off when you pull the trigger, it's not a gun anymore. It's a, it's a weight or a noise maker if it does go off, uh, you know, once out of every three or four pulls of the trigger. Um, the next big criticism I have, and you probably noticed in the video, was my hand was, or my finger was getting dirty. The, there was a blast of combustion gases coming out and getting my finger here. And uh, this is actually the next day. And if you look really hard, even though I do wash my hands, you could still see little specks of powder stuck in my finger. And that is not good. Uh, you can see it even more so on this one. So, yeah. Hopefully they'll go away. Um, I don't think there's any on my thumb. My thumb was pretty calloused before, so I'll try and get it to focus. And there we go. Yeah, nothing there. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> Um, I, I've had a similar experience with the, uh, if the, um, North American arms, uh, mini revolvers, they, they do that as well, but not, not nearly so bad. Um, but next time I shoot this, if I ever shoot it again, I will bring gloves because I don't want that happening and happening again. And hopefully I'm not tattooed and, and scarred for life. So a comparison, uh, unloaded. 
This is a high standard Derringer. And for comparison purposes, for size, you can see there, eh, real similar. Of course, the uh, the EIG here is slightly smaller in some dimensions. Although if you look, this dimension from where my thumbs are here is real similar. It sticks out in the back here a little bit more. Uh, the trigger pull, I think it's about the same length on the trigger pull. The height is almost identical. Uh, so real similar in size, uh, but you get uh, two more shots in this, and uh, you get 22 Magnum in the other. I would rather have the 22 Magnum. And in case none of you are familiar with that, we'll try, uh, try and show you that that's unloaded also. That's a Beretta uh, 950. And real similar in size, again, in, in many dimensions. Height almost identical. <clears throat> Length uh, slightly longer on the Beretta, but uh, that's only due to the beaver tail. And width, I'll give you just an idea. The, the width on the uh, EIG seems about the same. Uh, I'm sorry, a little, a slightly smaller. And actually, let's put all three of them together. You can see. Um, well, I don't know how well you can see, but eh. here we go. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But hopefully, I'll be able to cut it to where it's under 20 minutes. I don't know what the time limit is on YouTube. I could break it up into two videos also. And that is it. Zoom in. Now you get your close-up. Uh, the main reason I did a video on this was because I didn't see any other videos out there uh, uh, with any substantial review of this firearm. I could see why. Um, I, I bought it because it was interesting and I couldn't get a hold of a Mossberg brownie, brownie uh, inexpensively. Um, I learned a few lessons here. Uh, it's neat. Um, I would certainly take a, uh, a Beretta 25 that goes bang when you pull the trigger any day of the week over a uh, over, over a four shot, especially when the Beretta holds uh, a magazine with a few more cartridges. Um, a 25 out of this barrel length is is just as effective as a. Uh, uh, 22 long rifle as long as you're hitting your target and I'm not sure if it's focusing correctly but there you go this is Ryan Ham enjoy <laughs>